Okay, I'd like to introduce our guest speaker, Captain Tim Canole. He's a 10th president of the Airline Pilots Association International, which represents more than 59,000 professional airline pilots in the U.S. and Canada. It is the largest non-governmental aviation safety organization in the world. Tim was elected by the union's board of directors in late uh, 2014 and began his four-year term in January of 2015. As ALPA's chief executive and administrative officer, Tim oversees daily operations of the association, and he is also the chief spokesman for the union, advancing pilots' views in the airline industry before Congress, Parliament, government agencies, airline, and other business executives. Captain Canole is, serves on the FAA's Next Gen Advisory Committee and the Drone Advisory Committee as well. He is a Delta MD-88 captain based in Atlanta, and he's also flown the uh, B-727, the L-1011, the B-767, and 757. He is a graduate of the U.S. Naval Academy, class of 1982, a former Naval, Naval Reserve FA, FA-18 Strike Fighter Squadron Command Officer, and he retired from the U.S. Navy Reserve Captain in 2008. So, Tim, thank you for joining us. Uh, thanks, thank you for that kind of introduction, uh, TJ, and for the opportunity <clears throat> to get out of the office this afternoon, especially a beautiful afternoon like we have today. As TJ referenced, I've been an airline pilot for 28 years, and I do keep current. Um, I do fly the MD-88 as often as I can. And like every airline pilot, my favorite workplace is in the cockpit, in the cockpit. But if I can't be in the cockpit, I'd rather be here with you all today, so thank you for having me. Um, one quick story, it made me think of this because I was going to reference the fact that I'm still current. It wasn't too long ago I was flying an approach here at uh, Reagan National Airport down the river. It was a beautiful day, and I don't get to fly very often, but I'm proficient. And I flew what I would, you know, other really good pilots in the room might not think were a great approach, but I thought it was a fantastic approach. I made the turn to final, landing to the south, and everything went great until the runway ended up being a little closer than I thought it was, and we hit hard, really hard. Uh, hard enough for me to get four or five expletive deletives out before I could get the spoilers up to slow the aircraft down. Taxi to the gate, the co-pilot snickering almost all the way to the gate. <laughs> you know, he's a stupid Alpa guy, doesn't know how to fly the airplane. <laughs> so we get to the gate, and there's, we're early. It's a typical Delta operation. We're just a little bit early, and there's a plane at the gate. So I asked him, the standard procedure is please pick up the microphone, make a PA to ask everyone to please remain seated until the plane clears the gate and it's our turn to park. He says, no problem, Captain, picks up the microphone, goes, ladies and gentlemen, please remain in your seats. We're a few feet away because you never know, the captain might park it like he just landed it. <laughs> I could hear that through the cockpit door. <laughs> no, it is a pleasure to be here. It really is. So a few weeks ago, you couldn't turn on the television, pick up a paper, check your social media feed without seeing the news that 2017 was the safest year on record for commercial passenger air travel. Across the globe, we had no, no commercial passenger aircraft fatalities. Really amazing. This tremendous worldwide achievement made people pause and reflect on the tremendous work each of us does in this industry and continues to do to keep flying safe. But as impressive as this and really impressive one-year global record is, a year in the United States, we've accomplished this each of the last nine years. That's right, nine years in a row without a single airline passenger fatality because of an accident. Amazing. So how did we get here? How have we created and maintained the safest mode of transportation the world has ever known? And I do mean we. I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say that most everyone in this room has played a part, including the 59,000 men and women of the Airline Pilots Association International. As the largest non-governmental aviation safety organization in the world, ALPA has worked throughout our history to make flying safer. From our union's beginnings more than 85 years ago, safety has been the foundation of our work, and really for good reason. In the early days of commercial flight, Working as an airline pilot, simply put, was extremely dangerous. 
As a testament to this, more than half, that's right, half of its, foundings, of its founding fathers died in airline accidents. The idea of schedule with safety literally meant survival for the first pilots. As a result, it became our union's founding principle. I'm confident that ALPA's commitment to safety, security, and pilot assistance are among the reasons that flying is the safest mode of transportation today. So is the fact that every airline pilot is trained for life. For all of us, experience matters in both our careers and our personal lives. Whether it's your first time driving a car or your first time working on the hill or one of the first times you're trying to get your point across to a room full of airline professional professionals while they're eating lunch, we all understand that there's a difference in how we perform when it's something new versus something we've already experienced. The same applies for airline pilots. Experience counts. When operating a complex equipment in a changing and dynamic environment, so does constantly maintaining and sharpening our skills and judgment through training. When it comes to experience, a pilot gathers information with his or her senses, both about the environment and the aircraft that cannot be simulated in training. This means learning how to use the physical experience of being at the controls to help ensure safe operations. It's learned over time, and there are no shortcuts. To reinforce flight experience and skills, airline pilots also make a career-long commitment to training. Training comes in many forms. Initial training, recurrent training, programs and check rides, and the training required as new regulations are put into place. As a way to shed a little light on what it takes to learn and maintain the skills needed to be an airline pilot, ALPA has launched a new public awareness campaign to help underscore how much airline pilots are trained for life. Unlike the early days of our industry, airline accidents, thank goodness, today are rare. And when they do happen, our industry, probably more than others, I'm proud of that, learns all we can and does everything possible to prevent a similar accident from occurring in the future. For example, when four fatal airline accidents occurred in the United States over a six-year period, Congress took action to make flying safer. With the help and support of many in this room, our elected representatives responded to these tragedies by passing the Airline Safety and FAA Extension Act of 2010. At Congress's direction, the FAA reviewed the four accidents along with others. It found that shortcomings in airline pilot experience, qualification, and training have been factors in all of them. <clears throat> the set of FAA regulations that resulted from the law's passage improved the training pilots received in very important areas. These include flying in adverse weather and icing conditions, recognizing and recovering from upsets and stalls, and mentoring other crew members. The rules also updated pilot certificate and type rating requirements. Such a far-reaching modernization of aviation safety regulations had not occurred since the mid-1990s. The results, well, quite simply, they speak for themselves. In the 20 years prior to this congressional action, more than 1,100 passengers lost their lives in airline accidents. Since Congress has acted, the number has dropped to zero. Apple has been proud to stand with the families of Kogan Flight 3407, whose tireless advocacy has helped turn tragedy into safer skies. I am deeply honored to have with us Ken and Mary Ellen Mellett. Mr. and Mrs. Mellett lost their son, Coleman, in that terrible accident. We owe them a debt of gratitude for their determined effort to make flying safer for all of us. Thank you for being here today. In addition to the Kogan families, the coalition fighting to maintain these safety rules includes more than 100,000 airline pilots who are united in this cause. Okay, ALPA is aware that there are those who believe that we can reduce training hours and keep flying safe. We simply don't agree. The current system allows credit hours for different levels of training and flight hour experience as it is today. The system is working to keep our industry safe. 
And we're not willing to gamble with our passenger's safety to run some policy experiment pulled from a white paper or from a PowerPoint presentation. Airline pilots fly planes. We protect our passengers, and we train for life to keep the public safe and our industry strong. So please, take it from us, please, your pilots. Experience saves lives. One last thought on this. Think of it this way. None of us would want to go to a surgeon who has some of the qualifications. By same token, I don't think the flying public wants to get on an airplane with a pilot who has less training and experience when it, comes to, when it comes time to perform the required maneuvers. As demonstrated by the miracle on the Hudson and the tens of thousands of flights that take place every day, airline pilots trained for life. All who depend on air transportation are safer for the result. Now, I do want to make one thing absolutely clear. No one is more committed than we are at ALPA to ensuring we have enough qualified and experienced pilots to keep our aviation industry strong and competitive. The good news is that we currently have more qualified pilots in the United States than we do commercial positions available. That said, the forecast that thousands more qualified pilots will be needed in the future. So how do we make sure? How do we make sure we have pilots we need down the road and for decades to come? One important element is protecting our industry's extraordinary safety record. So we all understand safety is inextricably linked with the success and growth of the U.S. air transportation system. Safety must be as much a part of our future of the U.S. airline industry as it has been of our past. In the upcoming FAA reauthorization and through other avenues, ALPA will pursue our members' goals in advancing all aspects of aviation safety, security, and pilot assistance. For example, ALPA will highlight ways we can do more to enhance the safety of transporting lithium batteries by air. We'll eliminate, we will work to eliminate the risk from, and this next word is important, undeclared dangerous goods that because they are improperly labeled or packaged could also cause uncontrollable fires on, on board aircraft. So no official estimate exists for the number of undeclared dangerous goods shipped by air, but hundreds of hazmat incidents occur each year that when we investigate, eventually point to an undeclared dangerous shipment. ALPA is working with the Pipeline and Hazardous Material Safety Administration to advance our four-part solution to safeguard air transportation. It includes education about and enforcement of existing laws, increasing packaging requirements, creating stiffer penalties, and strengthening international rules and guidelines. To maintain our industry's high level of safety, we also, also must ensure the safe integration of unmanned aircraft systems. We know from recent close calls that UAS pose a serious risk and that risk is growing. As a result, ALPA commends recent action by Congress to enable the FAA to require all UAS operators to be registered so that we can locate the responsible individuals if necessary. But now we need to fix a loophole that prevents the FAA from regulating UAS used by hobbyists by repealing Section 336 of the FAA Reauthorization Act of 2012. I know there's concern, for for the hobbyists who are compliant, they really have no reason for concern. We know they already respect the rules. We can also enhance safety by installing secondary cockpit barriers and do more to protect the data collected through our voluntary safety reporting programs. ALPA pilots take tremendous pride in the contributions to safety of air transportation that we've made along with many other stakeholders, including each of you in this room. We know pilots in the future will want to become part of a U.S. airline industry that is no less safe. Attracting new pilots to the profession also means the U.S. airline industry must offer aviators good salaries, a healthy work-life balance, and a predictable career progression. One-time bonuses are no substitute for long-term contract improvements that pilots can count on as they pay for school and for their families. We've made some progress recently in providing appropriate compensation, but clearly more needs to be done. 
One recent example of success is Endeavor Pilots ratified a contract that converts one-time hiring and retention bonuses into higher rates of pay for the duration of a long-term agreement. That's in response to a modern market. And guess what? Endeavor is having no problems filling their cockpits with qualified pilots. Another essential factor in attracting pilots to our industry is making certain the U.S. airlines have a fair and equal opportunity to compete internationally. ALPA will never let up in our fight against atypical business models and foreign government subsidies that both threaten our airline's ability to compete as well as our careers. The principle of fair competition in economic marketplace has long been at the core of air service agreements between the United States and its trading partners. Yes, this includes open skies agreements with Qatar and the United Arab Emirates. U.S. policy is squarely premised on a market that is undistorted by government interference. So ALPA is hopeful because the Trump administration recently took steps to end such unfair practices and allow American workers to compete on a level playing field. So take it from me, and I feel passionate about this, passionately about this. U.S. airline workers can go up against any foreign airline as long as the competition's fair. Over the coming weeks, we'll watch closely to determine whether Qatar does take the steps to end its subsidies. It must also embrace transparent business model that reflects internationally accepted accounting and true auditing standards. But now the administration must stand firm on enforcing the U.S. Open Skies Agreement with the United Arab Emirates. The United States must demand that the UAE come into compliance with its Open Skies Agreements and stop subsidizing its airlines. Addressing these economics of what is needed to position air individual airlines to attract the best and the brightest to work for them and ensuring fair competition for U.S. airlines is an essential start. But there's more we can do to attract new and retain qualified and experienced pilots in our industry. First, we can make certain the U.S. military can easily and U.S. military veterans can easily and affordably transition into an airline pilot career. We applaud the Department of Transportation and Secretary Chow's commitment to making it easier for our veterans to work in the best industry in the world. Our union stands ready to assist others in breaking down barriers that may impede them from pursuing careers in aviation while maintaining the highest standards of safety. We should also reform the federal student loan programs to make it easier for young people to pursue careers as aviators. Lawmakers can move legislation to increase borrowing limits for students who are pursuing airline transport pilot certificates, commonly referred to as an ATP. Our industry can also do more to reach out to new audiences and encourage them to consider an airline pilot or aviation career. At ALPA, we continue to build on decades of outreach to aviators and students of all ages to promote the piloting profession. Every year, our pilots attend events such as Air Venture at Oshkosh, the Organization of Black Aerospace Professionals Annual Convention, the National Gay Pilots Association Industry Expo, and the International Women in Aviation Convention. In addition, hundreds of ALPA volunteers visit primary and secondary schools each year and participate in community events to encourage students to look into becoming a pilot. And we've launched with others, with others in the industry, many of the organizations here today, Aviation Works For You. It's a one-stop shop for exploring pathways to a career in the industry. So I hope it's abundantly clear that ALPA is doing more than ever to inspire the next generation of airline pilots. We're also focused on how our government and industry can do more to provide safe, reliable air service to communities all across America, including those in rural areas. With safety always as a top priority, always, there's more work to be done. As a start, Congress should ask the DOT to convene a separate working group to review the eligible air service, essential air service markets. We must also factor with greater weight whether a city that is a state capital 
should be given different potential va uh, valuing for the EAS recipient award. Lawmakers must also fund the small community air service development program in its entirety. Our government and industry has these and many other opportunities to safely foster air service in rural America. ALPA is eager to continue to work with Congress, the DOT, and the industry partners to achieve these goals. I hope you share my optimism today, because I truly am optimistic, as we step back and consider the U.S. airline industry's incredible safety record. In 2017, we celebrated that fact that we had the safest year on record globally. We should leave here today with taking tremendous pride in our work together to achieve this not once, but nine years in a row here in the United States. Together, we've done something very meaningful. We've saved lives. We've made our industry stronger. And in the process, we did it all. We, know, we all know that this wasn't an accident. We all know we had to work at it. We all know we're going to have to continue to work at it. And we all know it certainly wasn't easy. It happened because as an industry, we came together, petitioned our government, and passed life-saving measures to keep flying safe. So let's, let's make the same commitment today not to go backwards, not to settle for less, not to find shortcuts or workarounds. Let's continue to do the hard work of making air travel the safest mode of transportation in the world. ALPA believes, and history shows, that a well-qualified, fully trained, adequately rested pilot at the controls of our airliners is absolutely critical to continuing this safety record. I commit to you today that ALPA will never, ever stop upholding this principle because it provides confidence to our passengers and to our shippers, value to our companies, and economic might to this country. No one is more committed than ALPA to securing an adequate supply of airline pilots for the future with safety held as the highest standard. So, in closing, on behalf of the 59,000 pilots of ALPA, thank you for your focus on safety and for the enthusiasm we share in making certain that the safest place on Earth will always be in the air. Thank you very much. It's been a real pleasure to be here today.